her name was Cyrus, 500 years before he was born, there was a prophecy from one of the prophets that could really hear God and said, Cyrus, my son will accomplish these things. Cyrus was born 500 years later in a different empire with different gods, and he fulfilled God's will. Did you know that? And reestablished Israel as a nation. And he didn't even belong to God. I know everybody is thinking and saying, well, he didn't belong to God. Well, I don't know whether Trump does or not. But I do know this. He has a love for our nation. He's willing to lay himself on the line. He's gone to battle better than any warrior I've ever seen and stood more than any I've ever seen. I don't think anybody else could have done that. But I think God was behind it too. Why? Because he, Scripture says he's the one that selects kings. And if he selected this man, if he selected this man, we should be on our faces and saying, thank you for somebody... There's over 55 million illegal aliens that voted in the last election. All you had to do was have a body and be here. And oh yeah, they're on welfare. And oh yeah, they get free housing. And oh yeah, their kids are in our school. And oh yeah, we pay for their hospitalization. 55 million So what's next? God sent a man that wants to do something about that. God sent a man that is going to serve his purposes. Why? Because we have a bunch of Christians that are in the Congress and a bunch that are in the Senate. They're ready to write all this stuff. And he's ready to sign it. You realize that's never happened in history? There's never been this big of an upset in history other than during the Reagan years. But I tell you, during the Reagan years, we didn't have all the wackos running loose that have been running loose right now. We didn't have all the evil running loose in our nation that we had running loose. We, it wasn't running loose back then. But the enemy's been loosed in our midst. And if he's been loosed in our midst, let's look at some more scripture. Kiss the sun lest he be angry with you and you perish in the way. God has a way. He has a way. Are we going to make that way? And when his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are those who will put their trust in him. Do you trust in him? Through this election, did you trust in him? Through this election, I've just been at peace. I was sharing with my girls that, uh, you know, there's something going on. You don't have a clue. It's never gone on like this before. This is monumentous. And not only that, when God installs Trump, you watch. There's going to be rats running everywhere to hide. Because there's going to be every type of investigation going on, and we're going to find all pointed. You, you realize they're the ones that say, hey, we, we, we don't want to enforce that law. And not only that, but we think that that law is not really a good law. Therefore, we're not going to prosecute, and we're not going to do this, and... Psalms 147.11, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his mercy. I have been on my face for several years for this nation hoping in his mercy because I knew what his judgments were. I knew his judgment was against us because of what the church did to him. The pseudo church turned away from him. Became cold in heart and thought pleasure was, was it. Thought vacation was it. Thought pastime was it. Thought playing was it. Thought softening the gospel was it. Thought it was okay to, well, I don't know. They're pretty nice people. They love each other anyway. It doesn't matter to two guys. And scripture says that those who do it will be damned and those who approve of it will be damned. Did you know that? And I hope that you weren't senseless enough to begin to approve darkness. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. And the government will be upon his shoulders. Did y'all notice there was a Bible in the midst of that? 
and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Are you willing to do your part to put our government on his shoulders? The church would have done that eight years ago. Our nation would not be bankrupt. Our nation is bankrupt. It just had not come to the scenes right now. And the other nations don't want to admit that we're bankrupt. Why? Because they're holding a trillion bucks worth of our cash, trillions and trillions. <laughs> and, and they don't want it to go worthless to where you can't even build a fire with it. So they're, they're going to, no, no, it's, it's great. The economy's fine. That, only God could do that. Only God could do that. Let's go on. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. I love that, that, that simple statement. There's supposed to be an increase of his government. And who's the one that puts our nation, if we vote in what that's supposed to be, who's the one that's responsible for helping him increase by us voting and putting right people in office that have good values of light instead of values of darkness that they want to defend darkness. Upon the throne of David over his kingdom to order it, establish it with judgment and justice. Now, I ask you this. When Jesus returns, he comes and fights and there's no establishing it. It's done. But right now, we're still helping establish his judgment and his justice and our nation, but even being a force to be reckoned with. I didn't think those things could take place there in Texas. It had been a democratic state from, my goodness, World War II, since before. But the Lord said, no, these things can be challenged, and these things need to be changed, and the Republican Party platform needs to be changed, and I would like to take over the Republican Party and their platform. Will you do that for me? Well, sure, Lord. Can we do that? <laughs> and I was amazed to see those things take place. From that time forward, what time forward? It does, I realize many throw this to the end times, and I do have an agree, in agreement that Jesus will come and during the thousand-year reign, he will sit on David's throne. But when's the establishing supposed to be taking place? We're, we're still supposed to be establishing so that he can bring forth judgments and he can bring forth justice. And, you know, our Justice Department, you're going to see the rats run. Why? Because he didn't bring justice, and he loved justice. But he had to give America a taste of what injustice feels like, smells like, and acts like so that we could rise up and not only vote, but make the laws. You realize there's all kinds of laws being made around you all the time that nobody got to vote on. That a bunch of people down there in Olympia, they're make them, uh, make them up and pass them themselves and impose them upon you and me simple petitions and things like that. Now, I realize this is after an election, but I'm trying to outlay something to you that the Lord put in my heart. I had something totally different we were going. We were going to start the book of 1 Corinthians tonight, the order of the church. Hour and a half before I got to come down here, the Lord said, nope, I want you to look up this scripture, this scripture, and this scripture. I want, to talk, I want you to talk about what's next. What's valuable about the Supreme Court and what's going to be taking place there? See, because the media still thinks that, well, we just, we just ac accepted Donald Trump because he was a reject and better than Hillary. I didn't accept him on those terms. I accept him on the terms that he's going to get the nation straightened out because that's what he said. And if he's going to get the nation straightened out and be his man, that is something. That's far beyond what Cruz could have done. Cruz would have taken his politics and his Bible and all that stuff, and he's a lovely man. But he couldn't have gone in and flipped all the blue states.
from that time forward, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. Isaiah 35, 8. A highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. Did you realize highways are hand-built? Highways take planning. Highways take time. And if you're really going to build a highway, you get out some bulldozers and equipment and you list and conscript a lot of labor to build that highway, right? It's an opening to build a highway of holiness back in our Congress and Senate and in our Constitution. But it's going to take us saying no to the media. It's going to take us saying, no, I don't agree with that. It's going to take us making comments like the other departments do about all the false things that they say. Are you surprised at this sermon? <clears throat> I hope you're not surprised at him. He went boo to the rest of the nation, and I've just been as calm as I can be because he said that Trump was his man, and if the Christians would stand up, he would give them one more chance. And the Christians turned out and voted in record numbers over any of the time that they've ever voted. Did you know that? Who had to put that in their heart to do that? Huh? I mean, Trump didn't do it with his mouth, did he? <laughs> Who could have done that over some of the comments the guys made? Our God did. And I ask you, is, is God for us? He just did something for this nation that when we get to heaven, we'll say, Lord, we were in that little nations, and nations don't mean anything. But we thank you that you gave us a little more time to live in the light. You gave us a little more time to bring the light back. Because without the light, the lines grow dark, not gray, dark. Because the enemy wants to bring darkness. And the enemy makes the statement, we will fight for these rights, and I only want what's right for this nation. The enemy had made that statement today, if y'all listen to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to fight for these good things. And what's good? More taxes, homosexual liberality, I, I think it was in California a few years ago they passed the law that if you got a child in a public school down there, your child has to take schooling on how to become a homosexual just in case you have those tendencies. They love to push that here. They're headed towards that. Are you going to allow that? Now, we can say we're going to take our children out of school, but there's something we can do before then. While the rats are running, we can build a thought process around what defenses can we do to get that struck down? What petitions can we pass? Who can we elect different that has a different mindset and would not vote for those things that are down there? Because you send people down there that will vote for those things, you already lost. And it's up to you what kind of government you want. Let's go on. And it should be called a highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. And whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. Do you realize of holiness in our lives, in praying for our nation? Even if there's fools around us, we can still gain God's favor. You realize this nation lost his favor, and that's why he dumped our economy? I, I've been praying, Lord, how can we find your favor? How, how can I've been pleading with him. Would you give us one more chance? But with churches coming and saying, evil is okay, sin is okay, it made God mad. Saying abominations are okay at making our nation an Obama nation. 
I, I find great humor in <laughs> that God would would attach that name to those things. Isaiah forty thirteen and fourteen. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or as his counselor has taught him? With whom did he take counsel? And who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? And who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? So there's part of the problem is the church wants to teach him how okay us changing his church to match society is okay. And he says, well, fine. You want that kind of society? Let me give you... This guy filled with darkness that'll sell you and sell your children and sell your children's children. And in the midst of that, your weapons grade uranium that's down here in Oregon, I'm going to have Hillary sell it to the Russians, one fifth of your, your ore. Billions of dollars worth of the stuff. We need it. And the Russians turned around and sold it to the Iranians. And she signed the contract and made the decision to do that with our uranium ore. Who's responsible? We are. Because we turned away from God. Not our little fellowship. But for the most part, many Christians did. And when Christians, which is the heartbeat of of the pleasure of God towards a nation, when their hearts grow cold towards him, there's all kinds of complications that begin to happen to that nation. I look and see that he has had tremendous mercy upon our nation. Please consider, no one gets put in as a king except he appoints them. You realize that's the scripture. Did he appoint this guy? And if he had appointed this guy, then what should we do? Pray for his appointee. Pray and lift him up. Pray and say, he's God's man. I'm pretty bold saying he's God's man, am I not? I realize he's got an attitude like a tarantula. He's got a stinger like a scorpion, but he's going in to a bunch of wild apes, and he needs that. He needs that to go in and defeat what the enemy is doing there in the midst of that mud puddle swamp full of alligators. Now, I can't justify it and say it's of God, his nature and character, but can God use his nature and character to expose those things? Or does he need somebody mamby pamby and well they probably didn't mean it. Oh, and I'll pray for you. Or does he need to send in a bear and say, You did it, I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> <laughs> I see Trump as a bear. The media has not been able to wrestle him down. No one's been able to wrestle him down. No one. And I, I find that fascinating. Find it. But he's a prideful pig. <laughs> no, he's a prideful bear. Yeah. And a prideful bear's going to go hunting. And a prideful bear, if we will realize what the Lord has done and pray without ceasing, pray and get on our face and thank the Lord that we have just a small little window of opportunity to pass a bunch of stuff that the Democrats can't do anything with us until the end time. If those new laws can get passed, then we'll stop seeing the court do what it's doing. We'll stop seeing jury rigging there in Texas. You know what the Democrats did? They drew lines around the white areas and they would put okay, this is a white area and it's real strong and it's going to carry this precinct unless we slice that off and we're going to put twice as many blacks and wrap plumb around over here 50 miles to draw them in so we can nullify their, nullify their vote. They did that to the whole state of Texas. And it took a lot of fighting to get that changed. 
And they're still doing that. I read the other day about a couple of states who've done that in redistricting, they call it. <coughs> Why am I telling you these things? So that it gets in your soul and you can pray for your nation. And you can ask God for insight and understanding and you can pray for those people. I would not want to be Donald Trump. I would not have wanted to go through the things. He, I would not want to go. You realize our nation is broke. You realize it doesn't have an army. You realize it doesn't. Its military has stuff has been retired. All of its best pilots are gone. Obama dumped all the helicopters that we used in Afghanistan. Laid off all the pilots. Most of our stuff, we're, we are at the lowest state we've ever... We are lower militarily than we were before World War II. And Obama made this statement before he got into office. The problem with the Middle East and the world is because America has an army and they create these conflicts. And if I get rid of the army, then the conflicts will cease. <laughs> We don't have anybody, any business being anybody else's business. Well, I tell you, if you don't go get in their business, they're going to be in yours. In the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set upon a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. In the days of these kings, Jesus is setting... Right now, is he not? He's on his throne up there. His kingdom will never be destroyed. It still exists. It existed the day he said, Behold the kingdom of God. And he started talking about us moving into that kingdom. We're supposed to move into that kingdom and listen to him. And he will lead us. And if we can become his nation, his people, he blesses his people. He blesses his people. He does not bless those that don't want to be his people. And any nation that ever listened to the outside forces that try to convince it to stop serving God and stop doing things God's way, there, that nation was destroyed as a result of listening. Kingdoms shall not be left to other people. <coughs> He's given us charge of a kingdom here an extension of his kingdom. And he just said, it's not supposed to be left to others. So who's it supposed to be left to? You and I. We play an important role, and there's part of the problem. It shall break into pieces and consume all the kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Let's go on. And so much as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain with hands, and that it broke into pieces iron, and the bronze and the clay and the silver and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. You realize this is a prophecy in Daniel. And we're in the midst of this prophecy. And God is talking about him having ordered all these different kingdoms. And one of the last kingdoms to be established was our kingdom. And what are we going to do with our kingdom? And what's next for our kingdom? Because in a way, we're a type and shadow of Israel. We were the first nation ever to be formed under God. No nation was ever formed under God except for Israel. One nation under God. That was significant of our founding fathers, that God put it in their heart, and some of them weren't even believers, but yet they signed it that this nation is one nation under God, and it cannot exist without him and without his laws and without his directives. So our nation was very unique in its characteristics and in its exceptions and in its purposes of being formed. The sole purpose was that we would be a nation under Jehovah with Jesus as our king. Not under Muhammad, not under Allah, which is Satan, but under Jehovah, our Father, and Yoshia HaMashiach, our great master and king, Jesus, that reigns in his kingdom here on this earth. Zechariah 14 and 9. The Lord shall be king over all the earth. 
In that day it shall be the Lord is one. And I think that we play a role in keeping his name as one. Do we not? Was our nation not started that way? When our nation started that it was that was he he was it and he was the reason for having a nation and that if we had him as our king and our leader then tyranny would not rule like it did in Europe for thousands of years <coughs> Hebrews 4:15 and 16 for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness he saw us he saw our nation get in bed with a bunch of pigs and he said, okay, here's your penalty. I'm going to make you an abomination. And for eight years, he's watched us suffer. For eight years, he's watched us go downhill and away from God the Father. But he's our high priest. And he too, since he created and formed this nation has great desires for it to be able to serve him, to know him. He has used us. He has used us and used us and used us. Do you realize Trump made a commitment to Israel? We will be with you forever. And if I become president, I'm moving our embassy into your capital, Jerusalem. And I'm in agreement, you can do away with that Palestinian state. It's been nothing but a thorn in your side. Their prime minister, I read an article that he wrote today, he is so glad, he said, because the error of the Palestinian state that's been such a failed policy that's cost hundreds of thousands of lives because of that has ended when Trump takes office. If God didn't use him for anything else, is to put Israel back on the map and be a defender. Although there are Russian ships and a Russian aircraft carrier right off the coast of Israel right now, staging flights, running bombs on our people that's there in Syria. Do you pray about these things? We pray for our men and women that are exposed to those things. Do you pray and ask God to do something? He's putting a man in office that will do something. Our nation will eventually go to war. And when we do, God sends somebody that's a bear, not somebody that will lay down somebody that will win you do realize the Iranians have nukes now right you do realize that North Korea has nukes and has every intention of nuking us have every intention they don't care if they kill every last South Korean that there is they want the property back and they will not settle for anything less when they get the power to do so they will try to do so we have a few short years to God has sent forth a bear that will help us in that quest of rebuilding to make America safe again. The reason I talk about America is because it was once God's nation and he's going to give us a chance to pray for it because he wants to redeem it too. Remember, he's the redeemer. How many times did he redeem Israel when it turned against him? So won't he at least try to redeem us? Not turn his face totally against us? But punish us for a season so that we can turn back to him and be usable in his kingdom. We can turn back to him and pray. How many of you have prayed for Trump? What did you pray? <laughs> did you shut that man up? <laughs> How many of you are praying for the Congress? You see, that should be on our list. That's a top priority. How many of you are praying for the Senate? Because there's where all the foundational things are going to be laid to where evil can't take over again. 
With a stroke of a pen, all these gun laws are going to be taken down. With new legislation passed about ownership of guns, once again, people are going to be able to own guns without it being said that you're insane. You realize our nation would be run over if people didn't own weapons. We would already be a socialistic state. Why? Because we would be pushed around by those who have them, and those who have them are not good people. Now, I'm not urging you to run out and buy a gun. That's not my purpose. But there was a purpose in the Constitution that gave Americans right to bear arms because they had been overburdened by governments that stripped them of arms and they could not defend themselves against bad decisions. Our government decided our people will never be stripped of guns. Did you know that the murder rate went down 67% in Florida when they passed the handgun law? It went down 67%. That when they legalized, it was okay for you to carry a handgun. Why? Because they knew cameras were having them. There was 83% less murders that first year, 67 the next year, and it's continued to go down since then. Now, there again, I'm not advocating that you go buy one. What I'm advocating is our Constitution was written for a reason. And people have been trying to change it for a reason. Evil has been trying to change it for a reason. And it was not written by evil men. It was written by good men that could hear God. And God's like penmanship is all over that thing. Why do you think it's so fancy in writing? <laughs> it says some major things that God wanted to perpetuate into our society as him being the chief reason for establishing a nation. So what's next? Let us still find grace to help in time of need. If our nation is going to turn around, it's going to take us going before God and being on our face and praying and crying out to him and asking him for his tender mercies. Mercy means we don't get what we should get. Mercy means that he can turn his fierce anger away from our nation on the for the benefit of those who are praying and seeking him. Not for the benefit of those who are evil and want to disrupt everything. Now, I'm not encouraging necessarily to go out and run for president. I am encouraging you, one, to pray, two, to take these things serious, Three, calm down and realize God's involved. And if God's involved, he put a man in charge. And we should be absolutely enamored that he put a man in charge. He didn't pick anybody else to be in charge. He picked that man. And he has a very specific reason for picking that man. That man has been hit from every direction there is and will continue to do so. And I would counsel you strongly Bathe him with your prayers daily. For the enemy wants to find a chink in his armor and wants to take him down. And every media place except Fox wants to take him down and even part of them want to take him down. Have you ever seen it? That all the media owns everything and everything they got to say is bad and a lie. I'm praying that they pass some laws to prevent that. I'm praying that they'll pass a law there in Congress that, fine, radio station, TV station, if you want to tout this person, we're going to keep track of that, but you have to give away free time to the other person. The same amount. You've got to be even in this. Why? Because we need the truth, and the truth will set us free, but the problem is, is the press has perverted the truth because their truth is not our truth. Their ideas are not our ideas. Their thoughts are not our thoughts. Their thoughts are not God's thoughts, and they're against his word, and they're against his presence and his mind and his heart and against his purposes, and they're against his restraints that says men are not supposed to do evil. I have 
spoken on this subject and give you a couple of closing scriptures. And another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on its head. And I'm assuming you all know who that's at, right? This is not when Satan was thrown out of heaven the first time. Why? Because he's a red dragon and he's got seven heads, which means he owns seven governments. And ten horns means that he has ten different nations that he rules over. And seven diadems means he's got an additional seven crowns of something else. And all these are on his head, and with his tail, he threw a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth. Now, you realize the stars, what does he want to do with his tail? He wants to wreck God's plans. God has plans for America. And part of his tail is trying to affect the stars that he had for planned for America. You realize the stars declare the glory of God, do they not? And hadn't America represented the glory of God? It did in times past, and that's changed. Anyway, some clues for you in there. Third of the stars, he threw down to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Who's the child? Not Jesus. It's not, the, it's, 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 not the, it's, it's not that time. Who's the woman? The woman is the church. And guess who the child is? That's the next generation of godly men and women. And he takes the woman and her offspring and he goes, hides her in the desert. And this is during the last days. Remember, we talked about that. I do realize Satan got thrown out of heaven, and I realize the 30 angels were thrown down with him. But this is not then. It has to do with the last days. In the book of Revelation, right before Jesus comes and makes war against him. <coughs> so I think as a church, we should be ready to give birth to men and women that would walk with God. If we are ready to give birth with men and women that want to walk with God, who's going to be against us? The enemy. The enemy. He wants to devour the child. He's waiting to devour the child. So she bore a male child. That's somebody that can get something done. Somebody that's connected to God. Somebody that can pray. Who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Now we've got a prophetic thing in there that talks about Jesus and his second return. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness. Where did the church go? Into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. If we didn't have the 1,260 days in there, that's the time in the tribulation, I would be in agreement that perhaps we're talking about earlier, but instead we're not. Instead we're talking about Satan always tries to do the same thing again. He got thrown out of the third heaven, but his second heaven needs to be destroyed. And immediately after this, Jesus comes and he destroys Babylon that's in the second heaven. But when that happens, Satan gets thrown out of it and he's thrown down to the face of the earth. And who's he after? The church. The church. And so what should we do during this time? We should be playing offense and defense. The offense is to build up our presence in God's presence in praying for our nation, praying for each other, praying for the church, that it gets built up. Because if we get built up, then can we effectually pray? I realize Satan is trying to affect those things. That's why he's brought such a quagmire in times past in politics. And God sent somebody forth that's not involved in politics, somebody that somebody didn't buy or pay or send, somebody that wants to straighten out the mess. So I've given you all this so that you've got something to think about. You've got something to pray about. 
hopefully you have new hope that you can rejoice about that our God is on the move our God is doing something and he's given us a temporary reprieve you think during that time of that temporary reprieve we should be thanking him and being on our face and fasting and praying and rejoicing with our hands up and saying thank you O Lord that you want to get us in a position that we'll walk with you again thank you O Lord because if we, if we choose not, you realize we're going to be going to war and there's going to be millions of dead bodies. And what happens when there's millions of dead bodies? Oh, God, we need you. 911, when the buildings went down, you know, Elton went there. There were people out in the streets every day, many times a day, on their hands and knees praying turned all America towards God temporarily. So if we do our part in prayer, we may get a reprieve from the war that's said. Now, are you more concerned about dead bodies than you are people going to hell? Because our nation is going to hell in a handbasket unless they change their mind and their hearts towards a living God. He's interested in the eternal destiny of men and not the short fall of men. He's interested in their souls not being cast into the lake of fire. And then we seem to be more interested in, oh, we don't want people to suffer here. He doesn't want people to suffer forever. Wars have always caused men to turn towards God. I hope and pray that we can be effectual and the things that God wants us to do and get our nation in a position that we'd find his favor. If we do, we can avoid such things. If we let those that are on the wild, dark side rule, we can't avoid such things. And their corruption will put us in that position and take us there. So there's some things to do. What's next? <coughs> You pray and find out what's next. You pray and seek God. You pray and ask questions of how things might be changed. You pray and get close to God. You pray and frequent his house. You pray and come and get in his presence. Because if you're not getting his presence, he's not pleased with that either. Why should he save us and keep us out of any trouble if we're not going to be dedicated to him? Why should he multiply us and make us fruitful if we're not going to be dedicated to him? And do you realize he takes track of our time that we give him? The time that we're in his presence, the time that we hear his word, his word is precious. If he speaks his word and he speaks his word here on earth, some of us are complacent and think, Well, it doesn't matter, we can always hear a sermon. Yes, you can, but you can't always hear God. And he's going to pick that time you're gone to speak about something you needed to hear. And he's watching me and he's watching you to see, will we be faithful? When he returns, he's coming back for the called, for the chosen, and for the faithful. He's called to you. Are you going to be faithful? But when he returns, he'll choose you. He's looking for faithful children. Become his faithful child and become involved in everything that he instructs you to be involved in. And don't be involved in anything that he instructs you not to be involved in. He's not in it. Don't be in it. Don't play religion. We must learn how to contact him and be in his presence. I hope and pray that some of this got in your heart. Some of it. You can take his truth home with you. Some of it becomes revelation to you. But mostly, that you can see, with all the weird things that are going on in this world, we have a God that still likes us and cares for us. A God that gives us hope. Shall we pray? Lord, I, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your instruction. I thank you for your hope. I thank you for your correction. And Lord, would you lead us? And would you help us to walk in your presence that we could hear and know and not just run out and do politics? 
You didn't give us that assignment. You, you gave us the assignment to follow you. And you, you gave us an understanding that you're in charge and that you're going to be doing something in our nation and that we need to pray. So I pray for the Congress. I pray for the Senate. I pray for our new president that you somehow will lead them, that it will bring you pleasure to be in this nation, that you would rescue us from the schemes of the enemy and all the darkness that pervades, and that you would help us to grow strong, that we could overcome that darkness here on earth and bring your light. We are supposed to be bearers of light. We ask you for your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. You can turn off the camera there.